All right, hey guys, how's it going? Rod Dog Maniac in the building. It's morning, I just woke up. And some people wonder about my job, what it's like, and I thought I would just do a quick video uh, going over some of the photos that I take on a regular basis. This place that I shot had more of an industrial feel, so it's not always like this. This is just one of the nicer ones that I shot, and I thought it'd be a good example to show. For anyone that's interested in getting into photography or anything, I know there's a couple of people like that watching. And I did it, I did this previously on um, a set of horror photography. I might keep regularly doing this series, I don't know. Uh, the other day we went to Haunted Hoochie, so there's a video coming out on that. And then of course, get ready for those 31 walkthroughs. I've been editing my ass off trying to get them done. It's coming October 1st, a couple weeks to go. And um, pretty soon we'll be announcing the House of Horrors meetup date for when I'm available to uh, go out there and do that. So this place, well first off we're using Lightroom. And that's why I use to edit all my photos. Any good photos get labeled as a 3, which you can see over here. And then that helps you sort them over at the end. Like I said, this is a pretty industrial place. Um, it was in some previously abandoned buildings. Now they're turning it into an apartment complex. This this unit that we're looking at right now, it was three bedrooms. And please, you know, not all my photos are gonna be good. I'm just I experiment a lot of the time with angles, seeing what's gonna look good. Here we have. Um, a third wall in this photo. See how there's a, see how there's three walls. One, two, three. I'm including the third wall on the right here because there's a mirror which gives it the illusion that it's not actually a third wall. Because typically, if you add a third wall to your photo, it makes the room look um, smaller. It's gonna look like it's like closing in. The walls are closing in. But in this case, because of the shower or the, um, I'm sorry, the sink is sort of essential information to the room, and the mirror is there, it does not look as small as normal. Plus, this bathroom was massive in the first place. So we give that a three-star rating, and we go on to the next one. I have a preset applied to all these photos, so these are not what they looked like originally in the camera. And I should also mention that these are not the finished product. So you can see over here, there's like a yellow. And I send my photos in to be edited after uh, I do this brief sorting in Lightroom. So someone else would take care of this. You would not want to submit um, a photo like this where this line is kind of like bent right here and you have yellow. It, you will see errors like that and I'll point them out if I notice. Um, this is just another angle of the bathroom. Look how cool these are because now on, in this angle, we see that they have regular drywall up. So you have best of both worlds. You have modern and you have industrial in one unit. It's really cool. So you just want to get multiple angles of every room. This is, the, this is one of the three bedrooms of this unit. And you can see here, this is another instance where I include the third wall to make it look bigger. Not only to make it look bigger here, but because this is essential information that there is brick also. So you don't have just your three regular walls, you also have the brick wall. Just showing again the difference between two walls and three walls. Two walls looks a little bigger. The third wall contains that extra information. And then this is just another angle of it. We don't really need that angle. And then here is the closet. We'll include it, but closets are not always important. Only I only take closets if it's a really big space. Now here's another bedroom. Again, different wall here. So we took two angles of it. Now look, this is what happens when you take a straight angle. Look how horrible this looks. This is the exact same room. Here. Here. Terrible. And you'll notice 
Uh, for those with a keen eye, these lines are not straight, so we can play around with this dial on the side. This is how the original photo is taken. My me lining them up is actually straighter than using the um, like assist, the Lightroom assist. And that's because the Lightroom Assist is taking into account this line here, and this line here, and this line here. Whereas the only things we really care about are these. So just to show you again, vertical turns it. The way I shot it is correct. And auto also kind of turns it. So we're going to keep with that. Make sure you give it the three star rating and go on to the next. I'm just going to go through these as quick as possible. This one's crazy. So many lines. You don't want to be taking straight on shots when you are doing uh, interiors for really any reason. But I just thought because we have a little foyer up here, we have you know multiple sets of stairs, this is all important for the owners to see and for people buying it to see. And then this is what happens if you were to do it um, the way you're supposed to. That's why you have to know when you're a professional photographer, you have to know when to break the rules, when not to. Bathroom. So in this one, we do not use the third wall. You can see it in this part of the photo, which is another reason why you don't need to show it over here. I also kind of, a trick that I use is I use the um, bathtub interior third wall as a reference of when I should cut it off. So there is technically a third wall in this photo, yes, but it's extremely small, and I do that to make the bathtub area look bigger. This is the living room. And the problem with these pictures is this place is under construction. So if you look out the window, we have all this construction. That's something an editor would probably fix. At least I hope, you never know. Um, and it looks pretty good. So the preset, the reason why it's always on auto here is because the preset is making all the photos, it's auto correcting them. For instance, <clears throat> in this photo you can see, I just turned it off, my shot was not perfectly straight. And then there, that, that corrects it. We're looking over here. Look at these three things. This will tell you. See how they are going diagonal? Well, you can especially see it right here. This, this gap widens. Auto. Boom. That's just another angle of the living room. Like I said, you want to get multiple angles of each room. Now, here's an even better angle of the living room, and I purposely tried blowing out some of this area. So, <clears throat> one, one technique to hiding what's outside is blowing out your windows by using a lower shutter speed. Unfortunately, that creates these things here. And for professional photographers watching this channel, I know you're gonna, what your beef is gonna be is why don't you use HDR? And uh, for people who don't know what HDR is, HDR is composite imaging, where you're going to take five different exposures of the room. You'll expose um, for outside for the window, so you'll get the sky, which means your whole shot would be darker, so the inside would be dark. And then you're going to open up your um, aperture and stuff, and you're going to expose for inside the room, and then you're going to expose for the light. So you'll have three to five different pictures, one for each light source, basically, and then you will combine them all in Lightroom, Photoshop, S some cameras can combine them inside the camera. And the reason we don't use that at my job is because we're shooting, um, well, we're supposed to be shooting three to four properties a day, and we just do not have time to be setting up a tripod in every room, getting the perfect angle. And this is also, in my experience, this has been fine. We've barely had any customers that complain about, um, you know, wanting HDR. They don't even know what it is. And it would solve problems. Like, if you look at this light, this is a, a professional photographer would be like, this is terrible. A realtor or, you know, corporate, they don't, they don't really care. Um, 
And so it saves you time not doing it like that. Yes, if you were doing like a million dollar mansion or and probably not even, if you're doing like $5 million mansion, you'd want to be using HDR. And um, there's presets to like make it look kind of HDR. And yeah, you, can, you could always Photoshop in the windows as well. There's plenty of ways around it, but just explaining why we don't uh, use it at my job. So here, this is with, you can see the difference. This is where I lower the exposure to make the room a little more natural light. And you can see the sky is coming in, but you can also more easily see outside, that there are construction vehicles outside. Here's a dumpster. What's going on over here? Some other kind of stuff, fences. Oh well. I tried to avoid that stuff, but there was no way to show it. Now here's the other way. Of course this is going to be a three. This looks great. And what I really liked about this unit were these lights up in the kitchen. So what I want to do is I want to get a photo that emphasized the lights, the sleekness of the um, kitchen. And I did that by taking it straight on and just really playing with lines here. Look at how fucking straight these lines are. This is crazy straight. You have you have lines up from the lights, you have lines from over here, and you also have this straight black line here to really just contrast the vertical lines and a reflection enhancing the vertical lines. Just absolutely crazy, and I really like this photo. I hope they do too. This is not something we would typically take. So you don't want to make this your like kitchen photo. You would want to make another photo um, down the line we'll see that shows the space inside the kitchen that you're working with or a, a resident would be working with. Here's just another straight. Um, what we're trying to show here is vaulted ceilings, which is not really accomplished with the um, vertical or with the, uh, I'm sorry, at the angle. So if you look here, this is that same ceiling. It's kind of, that information is kind of lost in the photo because it's not the focal point. But here, you can see just how fucking tall this room is. And you can also see the living room in relation to the kitchen. So I'm going to add it. This is not a necessary photo. It's kind of just whatever. <sighs> All right, now we're starting to work on showing the kitchen. And there's a couple ways we can take this photo. But one thing we cannot do, which is what how we would normally take it, is straight on. So normally you would take a... I, I believe these are called like galley kitchens where it's just like a straight line. You would take it straight on and it would show the sink on one side and it would show the fridge and everything on the other side. Reason you can't do that with this kitchen is one, you're gonna have a reflection here in the window. And two, this fridge, if you can't tell, sticks out probably two inches off of this thing. So when you're taking the photo straight on, on your left, you're gonna have something sticking out, blocking all of the necessary stuff here. And then you'll have a just gigantic black um, countertop area on your right. I don't have a sample of it because I wasn't planning on making a video like this, but that's why you can't take it the standard way. With a kitchen photo, you want to make it look spacious and show as many of the appliances as possible. You don't need to get close-ups of the appliances unless you're specifically asked to. And fortunately, with this countertop being black, it's not as distracting as if it was a... Um, solid countertop well black and reflective it's not as distractive distracting oh my god i'm sorry as a solid countertop where this negative space would not look as open this looks kind of open and also kind of creates its own cool geometric shape here so that's the kitchen photo we're going to use then i put my hand in the photo to signify that i'm going to another unit and i'll skip over the couple i did uh, four more units 
we're not going to go into those and then we'll um talk about some of the exteriors and how those were made okay now guys we're going to take to the outside area brave the elements and talk about these photos now remember this is an industrial building property so we want to try to make it look that way and typically the way owners want um, industrial um, buildings looking is they want to see angles it's a lot about architecture so they want to see a lot of lines that you're paying attention to the lines of the building you also want to cater to their customer base which is going to be chic cool hip people um, and so that's what our photos that we take we're going to be looking for in this shot all I'm trying to do is portray the information that's around me to the people at my job or um, the corporation that we're working for at this time to let them know this angle is not possible because you have a dumpster, you have the giant crane reflection here, and you have trash here. So that's just more of like a save your own ass thing. If you ever are out shooting a property or something and there is an issue, make sure, I mean, you have a camera, you have a camera, document it so that in case there's any questions later you know why you couldn't do it so here's just another um shot showing the other angle don't like the street here and then you the trash is still remaining we are finding out that we are losing some of the reflection of the construction the way that we're angled from the glass which is going to play an important role in a couple pictures down the line here we're going to try an upward angle Again, keep in mind, these are not what we are submitting to the client. We would be filling in a whole sky here. Someone else does that. Um, and if you're, if that's something you're interested in, that's Photoshop. That's not Lightroom. So here we're attempting a straight on shot. Straight on stuff gives the illusion of upper class and hip. It just gives off like a hip vibe. I tried bringing those over into the uh, further right two-thirds of the photo, but it's not possible to get this framed up perfectly to how you would need. Um, it's still good, though, how it is. So for that reason, I'm going to send it in. Someone will fill in the sky for me later behind. And here's another attempt at it, basically just doing what I did with the crop, but manually. Now the glass enclosure, foyer room, obviously this is gonna be something super important to the client. So you don't wanna just say, hey, well, there was trash in front, I wasn't able to get it. You wanna to try to find some way to get it or some sort of Photoshop solution or whatever, because they don't care about excuses. So that one's okay. And that one's also okay. Neither of these I'm really liking. I'm going to submit the wider angle one so the people at my job can decide what they want to do with it. But because of the sidewalk line, this just is not framed correctly. It just doesn't look right. Um, moving on. Now here's this side of the building. There's This is not a pride flag. This is solar flare going on. We're going to try to get rid of it as I, as I slowly step to the left. So here we still have a little bit of it. This is not a good shot, clearly. The reason this looks like a fun house almost is because of the type of lenses we use. They make things look way bigger than they actually are. And the more vertical your lines are, the more it's just gonna completely bend your lines. So this is just a test. Hey, am I po is it possible to get the whole building here in one shot no it is not okay let's figure out another way to do it this is a nicer way to do it the lines are a bit of a problem because you see to straighten this building on the left we're gonna have to unstraighten this building on the right so this photo is also a lost cause plus a lot of parking lot we don't want to see anyway here we are at the upward angle, more straight on. These aren't working. Reason they don't work, in case you're wondering, very, very boring picture, weird lines. Um, where's the vanishing point here? Where, like, where are these going? Nowhere. Grass is boring, landscape boring, no sky, only three colors. 
that's why. This one's a little better, and I'll probably submit that only because I know we don't have a lot of good photos for this property. And here's an example of when we use the third wall versus when we don't. The third wall is giving the glass structure here a very specific defined shape. In this shot, you don't know what shape this, you don't know if the building ends right here or how the building's layout actually is. What I specifically loved about these photos is these lines here. This is a perfect time of day to come and give it that more artsy look to this property. So I was fortunate for those. Now we're gonna try straight on. Does this tickle anyone's fancy? It's okay, but it makes the space Hmm. You know, either one is fine, honestly. I'm just going to be with my original one. And moving along, these are the porches for the individual units. So I wanted to show that. And you can see we have the diagonal way, and then we have the straight on way. The straight on way is probably going to be what I go with. And now I really spent, well, when I say I spent a lot of time, it was really only like five minutes, trying to really show these lines here. Because this is something you were never going to see on most buildings. And we want to get it. We also want to show the brick texture. And that's probably going to be our photo right there. We're just going to test. Did I take it straighter than Lightroom? Yes. I feel like light, Lightroom, either I've gotten so good I'm better than a computer, or Lightroom straightening is just no longer good anymore. And then this one's good. So this is similar to, do you remember the grass pick? Let's go back really quick. Look at this. See the similarity in these two photos? The angle, the windows are the same. But what's so different is there are way more lines and there are way more colors in this photo. Forget that it's a better angle with the way the um, windows disappear. Forget that it's everything else in the shot. At, well, I mean, just don't forget it. Everything's better. That's why it's better. There you go. Here's an upward one showing those beams that created the lines. Remember what I said, shooting these industrial buildings is all about architecture. These are big architecture-based projects, and architects, people that are into that kind of stuff, they like lines. Here we go, just getting a close-up of this. What can we do with it? Now, let's try to play with some of the reflection off of this structure with the windows. I'm gonna submit this because it is weird. It's definitely an abstract, so you wouldn't typically use this to sell your property. But if your website or your listing is supposed to look artistic and unique, this would be something you might wanna consider. Um, this is not see-through. This is reflecting the, the building over here. That's what's so crazy about this photo. It makes it look like it's all one continuous thing. It's a really good eye illusion. Um, but it is kind of like, whoa, what am I looking at? You're also, you have bent lines and stuff. So that's why it's not for everyone, but I'll give my work the option to use that or not. Just another attempt at this, see what we get. Another attempt with the straight on, see what we get. Showing the windows, trying to get some of the history of the building. Here I tried more um, just straight upward, seeing what these will do. Again, I'm... I'm hoping they go with an artistic vibe to the website, so that's why I'm submitting weird stuff like this. The reason this photo is bad is you can see the fisheye effect here, how these turn, that my lens causes. And another thing is that you feel closed in, trapped, giant city. People aren't going to want that of their property, but hey, you never know. If everything's an exception because we're working with such a specific type of property here. That's just some more of them. I'm like, whatever, not that great of shots. Now I'm going to continue my way working around the building. So we were standing over here. Then we went into the here. This is where um, 
that glass box is. It's behind this building. And now we're walking around the front. See what we can get. Everything looks very plain. This one we're going to keep because most likely the people that own this property, they're going to want a shot that shows a huge portion of the building. And this is the best way to do it so far. I mean, we've, we've attempted it several other times and that's just the best one we can get. Here's a side. I don't know how much um, of this area they're going to want to see. Like that doesn't look very appealing. This is whatever. But the building, if you look, it has a, a defining feature. It's some sort of like elevator, exposed elevator area, or maybe it was previously like a fire escape. Um, this is visible from the road, clearly. Here's a house here. So it's important to try to capture what the curb appeal is and what people might be seeing when they're driving by the property. I actually had a complaint from a customer just recently they said the photos, everything looked great, but they had no idea. Um, customers would drive by because they didn't recognize the property. Well, that's a compliment to my work and how good I can make something look. It just goes to show you that how important the outside, showing the outside of the property is. I ended up having to take these terrible photos. There was like power lines and flags and all this stupid shit, and that's what they wanted. The property didn't look good, so taking it from far away did not help it. So here, um, with older buildings, and I know this just from living in Buffalo, I know I understand what people are looking for, and that's where my experience comes from. Things like this 925 are most likely something important to the building. You can see that it's worn down. So I wanted to get a shot that showed that just in case that was something crucial. I don't know why it was there, but usually that stuff is intentionally there and it's important to someone. Now here I'm trying to get more of a long shot to show more of the building and I'm using the vine to break up the plainness of the stuff surrounding the building. So maybe this will work, maybe it won't. And that's a little much. This is obviously extreme amount. I'm standing by like a generator right now. And that's like whatever. So that didn't really work. And that's the end. So this property was under construction at the time. So we didn't shoot important things like fitness centers, pools, laundry rooms, anything like that. We didn't have a chance to show any of that stuff. The leasing office was not even complete at the time that I did this. So I'll probably be returning, but this is just a sample of what I do in my day to day. Please let me know what you thought of it. If you like videos like these, if they're helpful, if you want to go more towards horror, I do a variety of photography, but you know, my day job is doing this and uh, I hope that some of the information helps you guys. All right, I'll see you in the next video. As I said in the beginning, so much coming out in the next two months. This is going to be crazy. Um, thoughts and prayers. I survive, people. Thanks for watching.